Next, application, automobiles. You should pop the hood of your automobile and take a look. And you should be able to identify what are the four components. The big two are coils. In the front, what coil? The condenser. Typically right in front of the radiator. The radiator has what type of fluid going through it? Antifreeze. Through condensing coil, you have your refrigerant, 134A. That's one thing usually you can spot pretty well. What's the next thing you can spot pretty well? Or maybe even easier to spot. Compressor running off of a belt that supplies the mechanical en energy. What's that belt? Serpentine belt. So it's drawing the mechanical power to run that compressor. Usually the evaporator, you usually have a harder time because it's tucked under the dash somewhere. And then somewhere close in, you'll have the restriction. As soon as you drop the pressure of the refrigerant through that expansion valve, it's ready to cool. Dump it right into the evaporator and start evaporating and cooling. You have two lines that go back and forth. You have what they call a high side line and a low side line. Low what? High what? Pressure. High pressure and low pressure. In one of the lines, it's high pressure refrigerant. In one of the lines, it's low pressure refrigerant, right? So in the high pressure line, what's flowing? Is it, li don't call it out. Is it liquid or vapor? And where is it going to and from? It's coming from something and going to something. And is it hot or cold? If I grab a hold of it, is it going to be hot or is it going to be cold? All right, do that for the high pressure line, then do that for the low pressure line. I'll pause. All right, so we started this class, this session, saying there was a condenser, evaporator, compressor, and a metering device restriction. Did the refrigerant flow that direction through the four devices? Where is the high pressure side? Where is the low pressure side? So we cut it here the compressor boosts the pressure so this is the high pressure side what is this one the low pressure side right now the other thing is is two components are typically close to each other in the residential application what was outside the house which of these two of the four components were close to each other outside the house the compressor and the condenser were close to each other. And inside, in the furnace, in the A coil, what two devices worked close to each other? Expansion valve and the evaporator. As soon as you expand it, you need to evaporate it. Right? Guess which line is long? The line connecting the condenser with the metering device evaporator, because they're real close together. But it goes first to the metering device, the expansion valve. And then this line, does that help? Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to go around and I want more perfect answers, okay? All right, one other thing that uh, will help you is always think about the air that flows over the condenser and the air that flows over the evaporator, right? So the air that flows over the condenser, is that the air that flows over the front of the car and is dispersed like that? Okay. You ever been in a, a parking lot and it's hot August and off the pavement, the hot air, maybe that hot air is 120 or 100, and, let's just be re, not that hot, 120 degree F air around the condenser is probably not unrealistic. I heard that the people that drive their cars through Arizona sometimes it even gets warmer than that. It's very hot. And then if you're on pavement, parking lot, your engine's sitting there giving off a belching off a lot of heat too. The car automobile radiators right behind it. Uh, it can be very hot. You have to reject heat to that. So what's the temperature of the refrigerant in the condenser? A good 15, 20 degrees higher. Does that make sense? The refrigerant in here is let's say 145. It comes out liquid. I know it comes out liquid out the condenser. But if I touch that liquid line, if I touch that high pressure liquid line right here, it's hot. High pressure liquid, hot, going from the condenser to the expansion valve. And then this line is low pressure. It's larger diameter. 
the air that went inside the car, you maybe want it blowing on you at 55 degrees F. The refrigerant has to be colder because maybe it sucks in the 75 degree F air. So the refrigerant in here needs to be, oh, I don't know, 40 degrees F. The refrigerant needs to boil at 40 degrees F. Make sense? So this is cool. Low pressure. And it goes from the evaporator back to the compressor. True? All that help? All right. So here's another illustration. It just confirms it. Uh, you, you, they color code it. I like the color coding. So it comes out high pressure liquid, goes through the filter dryer, goes up to this expansion control device. And I'm going to pass one around. It has a passage in the block that uh, has a liquid going this way on the bottom. And on the top, what does it have coming out of the evaporator? This right here, color-coded low-pressure gas or vapor. And so it's low pressure vapor going through. There's a bulb right here in the middle. It, it, it senses the temperature of what's coming off the, the evaporator. It will then lift or push down a needle, which will modulate the flow in the lower two parts of this block. It'll modulate the flow of the liquid into the evaporator. It'll control this flow rate by opening it or closing, pinching off. Because you don't want to flood the evaporator or starve the evaporator. You want to give it just the right amount based on the temperature coming out of the evaporator. So I pass that around. I'll also pass around what they call an orifice tube in automotive application, a lot cheaper to manufacture. So it's very popular. And you just have this in the line. And this gives you the automatic pressure drop because there's a small tube a small diameter about whatever inch and a half two inches long the engineers picked its diameter and length and they have screens to keep it from getting clogged with debris it's, you have to anticipate debris so i'll pass around the orifice tube both of these they have the same purpose this is the metering or the control the pressure drop how many people have seen people hook up gauges and they hook up gauges to the high pressure side and they hook up a gauge to the low pressure side Seen that? Yeah. So what are they doing? They're tapping into, you can do it right around the compressor or an automotive application. You do it basically where the lines are convenient. Back typically in this region, you tap into them, okay? This is the low pressure right here you would tap into as it goes back toward the compressor and then the high pressure right there. So you have the taps. Typically they're close together so that they can find them easy and attach their gauges and they can diagnose oh you have too much refrigerant too little refrigerant etc then they can hook up and they can charge the system or pull a vacuum and, and work on it